Hello friends and welcome to the first video of my new series where I convince you to read some of the best books that I have encountered in a few minutes with a few simple points. These videos are meant for the average reader, the layperson, they're not meant for highly trained academics or experts in literature because I am neither of those things and I imagine you aren't either. But I'm here to convince you why you as an average person, an average reader, should read these texts. Today I'm going to be talking about the Iliad by Homer. The Iliad is one of the oldest and most influential texts in the Western canon. It is foundational to the Western literary tradition. It directly influenced great writers from Virgil to Shakespeare. Thus, reading the Iliad will enlighten your reading of many other seminal Western texts, from Virgil's Aeneid to Dante's Divine Comedy to Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida. Now, I'm going to give you six specific points why you should read the Iliad. Point number one being, the Iliad established the epic tradition. We love epic poems and stories from Virgil's Aeneid to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy. We are fascinated by the long journey, by the meaningful quest, and by the characteristics that enable a person to complete such quests. A sense of duty and conviction, courage and excellence in skills both primal and sophisticated. This fascination began with the Greeks and Homer's twin poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey in which Greek heroes, removed from their homes, nevertheless seek to fulfill their fated tasks, please the gods, and win glory and honor along the way. From the crafty and brilliant Odysseus to the brave and faithful Frodo, we root for our heroes to complete their tasks and quests and return home again. The Iliad is the epic that brought together our highest ideals and our deepest flaws and temptations, and demonstrated that it is the intersection of the two that resembles most closely the human tradition. If what I have been saying speaks true to you, then I think you should read the very first epic in the Western canon, the Iliad. Point two, the Iliad illuminates the personalities and dynamics of the Greek gods on Mount Olympus. And most of us are vaguely familiar with who these gods are, but many of us, very likely, don't actually know that much about them. If you've merely a vague notion of who Zeus and the Olympians are and how they relate to mortal heroes and ordinary men and women, then the Iliad should be your starting point in getting to know these Greek gods. The gods and goddesses, particularly Zeus, Hera, Apollo, Aphrodite, and Athena, are hard at work in the Iliad, interfering time and time again in the war of men and bickering amongst themselves all the while, so you can really get to know their personalities, their relationships to each other, and to mankind in the Iliad. Point three, the Iliad established the literary archetypes of hero and antihero. Characters like Achilles, Hector, and Diomedes embody the heroic archetype, both in terms of their bravery, valor, and sense of honor, and in terms of their tragic flaws. Achilles is the most perfect embodiment of this complexity, and the way one character can be both hero when he is at his best, and anti-hero when he is at his worst. This duality has since been present in many Western classics, from Melville's Captain Ahab to Fitzgerald's Amory Blaine to Shakespeare's Hamlet, and this all began in the Iliad. Point four, the Iliad highlights the concept of fate or destiny, that force in control of an individual's life and death, which has subsequently pervaded the Western canon. References to fate and destiny are found all throughout the Iliad, and as the story unfolds, readers can watch characters' fates unfold. Achilles, who has been told that he will win glory and honor at the cost of an early death if he stays in Troy, is the most obvious example. Do characters control their own actions and their own fate, or are they simply following a path prescribed by the gods? This question, and the tension between fate and free will, are prevalent in most major works of literature following the Iliad, and in our own lives and existential musings. Point number five, the Iliad demonstrates the complexity of morality and rejects moral binaries. No character in the Iliad is simply good or bad. No side, Trojans or Greeks, is more noble or flawed than the other. This is related to the concepts of hero and antihero, but extends beyond the central characters of the Iliad. Even the gods, though powerful, are wildly flawed. The moral complexity of the characters of the Iliad has been echoed throughout subsequent history, but especially in modern literature. Some obvious examples include Raskolnikov and Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, as well as a host of characters in his book The Brothers Karamazov, and in Tolstoy's War and Peace and Anna Karenina. Visions of a black and white world and black and white characters are far less common in Western tradition than the complex types of characters first found in the Iliad. And finally, point number six. The Iliad demonstrates the disillusioning effect of prolonged warfare. The brutal realities of warfare are a recurring theme in Western literature. 
beginning with the Iliad. Though the Trojan War began with a noble cause, namely the return of Menelaus's lawful wife Helen from the crafty wife-stealer Paris, as the fighting stretches on for nearly ten years, resulting in the deaths of thousands of Greek and Trojan warriors, members of both sides begin to question whether the war is really worth fighting, and yet neither side is willing to forfeit their honor and back down from the fight. Homer's vision of war is thus complex, bearing some romantic elements, but also portraying the frank brutality and disturbing violence of warfare. Readers are left to discern Homer's perspective and to form their own opinion on the tension between honor and war and the value and necessity of either. And of course, this is a tension that we still struggle through today as we examine and experience wars in the 21st century. That wraps up my quick spiel on why you should read the Iliad. I hope that I have convinced you. I hope that you will pick up this great epic poem. I hope that you will read it slowly and quietly and thoughtfully and that you will enjoy it and gain wisdom from it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe if you want more videos like this where I talk really fast and try to convince you to read a really good book. See you guys again in the next one.